Welcome to Hallmark Dental Laboratory Education. In this presentation, I will be showing how to replace a complete upper denture using an intraoral scan. I'll be demonstrating using the TRIO scanner and TRIO software package for this application. What we see here is the order form, which is essentially the prescription, choosing a full denture application. Your tray setup or your room setup for this procedure would involve a tray adhesive, polyvinyl, I use a light body in this case, clinical camera, sharp blade and handle, and a shade guide. Most interoral scanners have a feature or workflow for dentures. This TRIOS workflow allows the option of scanning the edentulous ridge, scanning a complete denture, uh, in this case, that's very helpful if the patient has a denture that they want very little changes with, a, a replication or duplication of what they have. In this case, since we will be making some changes, I chose the middle option, which is to scan an impression. I'll be using a slightly modified technique for this. The first step I did was apply the tray adhesive. The manufacturer recommends letting this set for 5 to 15 minutes. So I like to put the tray adhesive on and then move to some of the other procedures I can do while that's setting and preparing itself for the bonding. Uh, I liberally apply that. You can see I just pour it in, use my finger to spread that around, make sure I get it everywhere. I also liberally apply it to the facial. I don't want that to peel back at any area. So I'll put that around all those spots, set the denture aside, and move to the scanning. Starting with the lower scan, the scan strategy is similar for most intraoral scanners. They recommend starting with the occlusal of a tooth that has enough anatomy for reference. So we'll start on a molar or bicuspid. In this case, we start at the molar, scan across this way. When you get to the incisors, they recommend rocking back and forth. Now in the case we're seeing right here, this patient has a cupping and the significant anatomy here, but on many incisors where you've got those thin incisal edges, it's not enough reference point. So you'll rock this way so it gathers more data out to this point, putting the scanner onto the buckle, make a pass this way, rolling the scanner to the lingual and make a pass that way. That typically captures all of the information you need. You can go back in and re-reference if there's a spot you didn't capture. Now, a spot where you have uh, edentulous spaces, and especially if there's any tipping in the molars, it's often hard for the scanner to see on the first pass. So you'll go in and probably recapture those areas just to make sure you've got a nice complete scan. To add to an existing scan, You'll start by putting the scanner on one of those reference points, an occlusal that it can capture. When you hear the scanner start to pick up and reference it, then you move into the area that you want to capture and add to the information. With the digital record captured for the lower, we'll move to the analog portion, and that is the reline of the existing denture, which I'm using as a tray. Using a light body material, I will put that in the denture and seed it intraorally. It is critical when you're taking this type of record to have the patient bite to set the occlusion on this. Uh, many clinicians will try to hold the denture like a tray and it's very sensitive to rocking here either in an anterior posterior direction or laterally and it will throw off the occlusion. So in order to establish the, the reline record that matches the occlusion of the denture, have the patient bite and hold that in place. So what we'll see here, uh, we bottomed this out in this area and this area right here. Those are the areas of the denture that's most well adapted and the areas where we see some polyvinyl, some impression material are the areas where there's a gap between the existing denture and the current situation. When that's in place, I'll have the patient bite firmly, holding that in place to their own occlusion and then I'll gently border mold. So grab the lip and in a, in a slightly downward motion, uh, roll that across and create the roll across there. Uh, you, you remember I put the tray adhesive very liberally across the surface. It will stick across these, this entire area. Uh, I do want to clean that up a little bit for the next step. 
and that's what we see here. Using that lab blade or a scalpel, I'll trim that back. The reason it's so important to trim this back, we will be using this as a reference for the existing occlusal plane, the size and shape, the midline. This, in a traditional sense, what you would use with the stabilized base and occlusion rim for the markings, we're using all of those references here. The more information we can pick up in this scan, the more useful it is to the technician when they're designing the final. This is the, sc the scan strategy that's recommended. A pass across the ridge, scanning back and forth over the palate. Finally, a pass across the depth of the sulcus. And after that is all recorded, you look for any gaps uh, or holes. Sometimes the deep area is hard to capture and you'll have to go back and add a little bit there. I add a number four on this one because it's not simply an impression, but it's a denture used to hold the impression. I want to capture the fourth pass, which is the buckle and the teeth. Just demonstrating the denture scan here. In this case, you'll notice some white powder. The powder is not necessary intraorally. It's not even necessary extraorally. I did have a bit of a shiny spot on the denture that was creating a little bit of a challenge. Rather than fight that, I just dusted it with a little bit of occlusion spray, which made it much easier for the scanner to pick up. So if you have some of that, feel free to dust it. Now, what you'll notice here, uh, I've just done the internal surface, rolling over now to the buckle to pick up the, the facial surface of the denture and pick up the teeth. You'll also notice that I'm moving the denture and the wand. Don't get trapped into the, the uh, habit of only moving the wand as you would intraorally. When it's bench top, move both. It's easier. It allows you to scan that uh, and pick up all surfaces. And that's it. With that, we've recorded all surfaces of the denture. Now on to recording some photographs. At this point, with the polyvinyl, reline or wash impression inside the denture, it's now more stable. So now I can try that back in. So you'll see in this picture, if you look very closely at the teeth, you've got some of that tray adhesive that I put in there. Um, that's because this is the reline, this is the denture with the reline in it. Uh, a photograph with the, with the teeth exposed, uh, let's call this a smile photograph, with the eyes in the picture, is a valuable photograph for the technician. Here it is at rest showing the incisal display with the lip at rest. This is an analysis that was done at the lab. Interpupillary distance, we would draw the line from pupil to pupil. Uh, the line that we see as the vertical is a perfect bisection of the interpupillary. With that, we can see a horizon and we can see a midline. And now we can compare the midline of the teeth and whether or not the teeth are parallel to the interpupillary line. In this case, I find the denture does have a little bit of a cant to it, and I would like that corrected. So this photo is communication of that scenario to the technician so they can see the actual, uh, the actual occlusal plane as it is seated in the patient's mouth. A shade tab photograph. In this case, the patient has chosen an A2. Uh, we, we had that discussion before this stage, uh, so the, there's not really a necessity of sending this photo to the technician, uh, but it's a good habit to get in if you're doing anything that requires lab communication to just take a shade tap photo. Uh, some good things and bad things about the photo in this case. Uh, you can see that we're, we're nice and square on with the shade tab and the teeth. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty good capture of the shade tab with the shade tab information. We see that in there, so there's no confusion that this is an A2 tab. Um, in this photograph right here, you can see some of the denture adhesive. Um, it would have been nice if that had been cleaned up before the photo. Also, the reflection. There's a little bit too much flash on here to be highly valuable as a shade tab photo. Uh, if this were for Crown and Bridge, I would have taken more photos to correct that. This is the record in its stage ready to be sent to the lab. 
the lower scan was converted, the upper scan was converted, and then a bite registration. A scan on each side with the patient in occlusion snaps those into place, makes the record ready to send. Just a side note here, you'll notice in this photograph, the occlusal plane looks to be flat and level. Uh, it's the importance of the, the clinical photograph that goes along with it. Uh, otherwise, the denture technician may assume that this is a flat plane and just want to redesign that. So the photos are going to be really helpful for the technician to, to see the difference in the changes that we want to make. That is the first appointment for replacing a complete upper denture with a digital scan. In the next video will show the second appointment, which is try-in and verification of aesthetics and fit.